Hi chickens, I'm going to take you on a little journey of love with my Journey of Love Oracle deck. I mentioned in my last Witchy Hall video how much I absolutely adore this deck. It's just so beautiful, it's so thought provoking and I think it's really going to take me on an important journey of learning. Actually I think it's something that I'm going to incorporate into my spiritual practice. I think this deck just has so much to give. Um, it's, it's overflowing with wisdom and with beautiful imagery and it's something that I think is really whole. It works as a cohesive system. So I'm going to take you through a few of the cards and maybe read to you a couple of the passages from the guidebook that comes with it, which is also very lovely um, and includes some poetry. So it will be, um, it's Anna Fairchild doing the writing and then I believe it's Richard Cohn uh, writing the poetry, which has kind of a haiku slash roomy-esque flavour to it. So the first thing I wanted to mention was the different types of imagery in this, uh, in this deck. Firstly, you have this kind of um, more abstract, impressionistic flavour to the art and quite a few of the cards are kind of um, like that, more than being uh, literal and involving figures and scenes. So I, I would say about half the cards have this kind of flavour to them, this flavour of just being dropped wholesale into a surrealistic um, group of patterns and colours that kind of take you off the beaten track and make you think about different concepts and maybe how those colours and patterns feel to you through your consciousness. So that interested me quite a lot. And then you have the more literal um, cards, which again are about half the deck, which pertain more to figures and scenes um, and locations and things like that. I'll see if I can just quickly find another one for you of that type. Here we go. So there's a figure kind of looking out over a pretty glorious sunset or sunrise there. So they're kind of like the other half of the deck. Um, I really appreciate both actually and some of the patterns that are used that are more surrealist have a kind of a more abstract or cubist flavour to them as well while some of them are kind of um, more surreal in nature I would say. So I think that's an interesting thing about this deck that I really enjoy is that it kind of combines um, two kinds of art together. Here's what I mean about the kind of cubist vibe that's going on. Um, those kind of shards and fractals and kind of this sense of perspective and foreground and background that kind of drops you into it. So I really enjoy that about it. Also, I wanted to mention that there are, um, hang on, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven cards that have a much more minimalistic flavour to them. <clears throat> Actually, when I first opened the deck, I thought that these cards kind of interfered somewhat. They kind of um, broke the spell in a way because they're so simple and they have uh, no colour to them or very little colour to them. So it's interesting that there are these cards that um, a decision has obviously been made to... Um, place these dots of simplicity into the deck. Now these cards have actually grown on me because I would say that actually they kind of punctuate all of the colour and the majesty of the textures and the patterns and the scenery and things like that. They kind of offer somewhat of a wake up call vibe to them which I think is really interesting. So I've been doing a little bit of work with these cards just on their own and kind of coming to grips with how I feel about them because they are so different from what the rest of the deck offers um, just for some contrast. These are kind of the more simplistic cards and then you get this explosion of colour with the rest of the deck so I think it's important if you are going to work with this deck to get a sense of what these more simplistic monochrome cards actually mean um, and why perhaps they are more minimalistic and it's interesting because actually they do have names that um, that kind of tap you in sometimes to the reasons for them to be more simplistic and to have a very little use of colour. So devotion to the small and simplicity, I would say are both kind of titles that lend themselves to this more minimalistic feel. But it will be something that is kind of an interruption for some people, I would think, because um, it's very easy to get lost in, in the majesty of such incredible colours and textures. So when you come across one of these sort of black and white cards, it might be a bit jarring. So that's also something that, that I'd say it's interesting to note. So I'm going to give you a little flavour of um, the kind of messages that the guidebook that comes with the deck actually offers. So let me just try and find um, a card that I can kind of read you the description of. This one is so pretty. It's just beautiful. Heart of the moment. How can you argue with that? 
I mean, isn't that really what life's all about? This one's lovely as well, Cosmic Butterfly. And this one I really love, um, the Christ Flame. Uh, this actually inspired me to develop a reading on my Etsy shop um, called the Divine Lightworker Reading, which is actually for people who consider themselves to be lightworkers, to be mystics and sages in the world who are looking to make connections with the like-minded and help people to actually shift into a higher state of consciousness and live life in a more full and meaningful way. As soon as I saw that card, it kind of inspired me to create a reading that was specifically for these people who are healers and who are guides. Um, and the reading actually helps them to maintain their own vibrational frequency and protect themselves from negativity which might interfere with their work and it also kind of offers them inspiration to go forth and actually bring their magic and their majesty to the world and to the human experience so actually already this deck has been really inspiring for me in many ways um, so this card is called Shakti, which is the Divine Feminine Principle. I'm going to talk more about that in a video soon, I think. Um, and this was actually the reason that I picked up this deck. I don't know if you've not watched my Witchy Hall video, then you won't have heard my little story about this. But I've been interested in connecting with the Divine Feminine within me lately and actually getting a more holistic and overarching sense of what that really means to me at this point on my journey. And that led me to go onto Google and take a look for an oracle deck which included um, either a divine feminine principle threaded throughout it, which I would argue that this deck definitely has, or actually included a card called Shakti. And I found this deck and I purchased it straight away. So this card is actually the reason that I ended up owning the deck in the first place. Um, so I'm just going to read you the passage which is associated with this card from the book. <clears throat> it says... Shakti is divine feminine fire. She is the body awakened with light. She is the divine feminine and she is the kundalini, the energetic force that moves through us, triggered by love that leads to enlightenment of our body. With our kundalini coming alive within us, we cannot remain as we once were. It is impossible. We may try to lead the same lives, be the same in our relationship patterns and perhaps even behave properly, but it simply cannot be done. Soon our disguise slips and people wonder what happened to her or what has gotten into him. We are on fire with the divine and we cannot help but misbehave. We are no longer satisfied with trying to be the good child or fearing that we are the bad child. We know ourselves instead, of the instead to be the divine child. That, that child divinely, sorry, that child divine lives fully and with passionate fire, not doing things the way they're supposed to be done perhaps, but living instead from the heart. Okay, so this is the kind of passage that you can expect from the guidebook that comes with the deck. The passages are, are so deep and actually what I found when I first purchased the deck and started working with the book is that I was kind of rushing through the passages, trying to look for something um, specific in terms of meaning. Um, and it was almost like it was so, the words were so dense and so rich and so much was on offer that I was actually getting frustrated looking for the meaning. So it's actually been a good training device for me to actually sink into the meaning of the card and to go through the layers and be patient and actually pace myself with the interpretations so that's been a, a really interesting thing too also along with the poem that comes at the beginning which kind of sums up and embodies the energy of the card and then you've got the passage from Anna Fairchild um, at the end of each passage she actually does give you one line which kind of helps you to sum up the direction or the message that the card is embodying so um, let me just have a quick look at this one Okay, so at the end of each page, she'll, at the end of each passage, she'll say something like the oracle speaks and then she'll give you one line of direction to help you understand um, more kind of succinctly what is going on with the card. Although for some reason, oh, here we go. The oracle brings you guidance. So with this one, it says a spiritual gift of inspiration is on its way or is just recently being received. It isn't flight of fancy. It's a gift from the divine. Receive it and believe in new possibilities. So she does actually give you something a little bit more instructional to work with as well. But I would definitely recommend if you do start working with this deck to actually kind of drop into the passages and allow yourself to be absorbed in them. Because once you kind of slow down and stop looking for the inherent meaning or the very instructional advice, you can appreciate that a lot of what she's um, bringing to the table is very positive energy, which kind of reminds you of your of your spiritual nature um, and of your uh, existence as a being of light and love and all that good shit. 
So that's kind of my little review um, or my little kind of impression of the Journey of Love Oracle deck. I think it's absolutely beautiful and I would thoroughly recommend it to you. I think it just has so much to give. Um, it features 70 cards um, with these paintings by the artist Rasuli and they're just bursting with life and with majesty so if you do end up working with the journey of love please let me know what you thought of it um, and give me your input because I would love to know I think it's something that I'm definitely going to be using as a spiritual tool and I'm really excited that it's kind of maintained pole, pole position lately and helping quite a lot of my clients to realize their own journey towards um, soul purpose, journey towards the majesty of, of what it really means to be alive and what they can achieve. I think it's a very nurturing deck in that way and that's the other reason that I wanted to purchase it. So yeah, I'm really, really happy with it and I hope that this has been an interesting little review for you. Much love guys, blessed be.